Aloha, I'm Yanji Denise. Welcome to Get Your House in Order, the show where we help you take care of the things that matter most. In this series, we cover a wide range of topics from health and wellness to financial readiness and preparing for every phase of life. Today, we're talking about how to make sure the most vulnerable in our community are protected against scams or abuse. That's coming up in just a moment, but first I'm joined by Paula Ito of Hawaiian Financial Federal Credit Union. Paula, tell us about how this particular issue fits into get your house in order with get your house in order we want everybody to be organized and prepared for anything that could come their way and unfortunately having becoming vulnerable and not being able to take care of yourself or knowing someone who may be in that situation is very important and just to be aware it's more of awareness and being able to spot these type of situations okay and tell us a little bit about the larger get your house in order campaign and the whole kelly guidebook Yes, Get Your House in Order is now in 1.4. We're in season four of the TV show. And what we want to do in this edition is to just take care of the miscellaneous items, not necessarily things that were in the past, present, or future, but things that just necessarily don't fit in those categories, such as working after retirement or marriage after a divorce, and also being able to do self-care for yourself as well. Yeah, and we're talking about maybe you have some concerns about what's happening in your life or you're worried about a loved one, someone that, you know, a parent or an auntie and thinking, oh, maybe that person's not getting the best care. Right, sometimes it's just being aware of what that is. How, how do you spot not someone being neglecting themselves? You may think grandma or your parents are doing well, but being able to spot what's happening and make sure that you're prepared for what you would need to do. Okay, such important information. We are going to be speaking about that today. We'll be talking with the head of the Adult Protective and Community Services Division about what resources are available. For all your money needs, Hawaiian Financial Federal Credit Union is here for you. Visit HIFICU.com. Bringing you what matters. Viewers can receive the Star Advertiser digital full access subscription for $9.95 per month. Go to StarAdvertiser.com and click on subscribe. Use the code AHIGHTHING. Don't miss Hawaii's favorite local shows. Get your house in order with Yonji Denise. It's a Hawaii thing with Lanai Tabura and Brooke Lee. How many episodes did you get? I think I did four. Oh, you're in forever. <laughs> Culturize with McCunny, The Art of Beer with Tim Golden, Daniel Bruce, and David Power. Hey, you literally bought more Guinness than any other Cuban in Hawaii. <laughs> Check your local listings or visit wikiocast.com for full episodes. Welcome back. Joining us now is Lisa Amador, who leads the Adult Protective and Community Services Branch of the Department of Human Services. Lisa, thanks so much for being here. It's my pleasure. Thank so you. tell us a little bit about the kind of services your agency provides. So Adult Protective and Community Services Branch is part of the Department of Human Services, where our vision is that the people of Hawaii are thriving. Um, for Adult Protective Services, primarily we're investigating reports of abuse or neglect to vulnerable adults. We also have some community services that provide outreach um, and uh, opportunities for older Americans to volunteer in the community. It's good for their well-being. And it's good for us. It yeah. is good for us. Um, tell us a little bit more about that definition. Who qualifies as a vulnerable adult? So by definition, a vulnerable adult is, um, to qualify for our services, uh, you're a vulnerable adult if you're age 18 or over and you um, have difficulty communicating your needs, um, can't provide for your own activities of daily living, basically caring for yourself, or, and or you can't protect yourself from abuse or neglect. So interesting. Give us a few examples because I think what we tend to think of as people who are over 65, we th tend to think of seniors. Sure. Seniors, um, like everyone else in our community, are made up of a beautiful array of different abilities, um, uh, different experiences, so not every older American is vulnerable. I'll give you an example, um, and I have her permission to do this. So my mother is in her 80s. She reads the classics, she goes to the Y every day and does Zumba, she can Zumba around me. <laughs> we play board games, strategic games. She's better at so many things than I am. She lives independently and cares for herself. She's in her 80s. Um, she's not a vulnerable adult. 
right? So she wouldn't qualify for our services, even if she were the victim of fraud. So someone who would qualify, for example, someone with Alzheimer's or dementia, that would be a, a pretty classic example of someone who would qualify likely for our services. Tell me about the kinds of um, things that people do to target vulnerable adults. Are we talking about financial fraud, things that are happening online? Are we talking about physical abuse? What, what exactly are you protecting against? Yes, both and then some. So physical abuse, um, sexual abuse, financial exploitation, psychological abuse, caregiver neglect, and self-neglect. Self-neglect being the, the form of harm where there's not an alleged perpetrator, it's just someone who can't care for themselves and so is in danger. What is the best way for someone to engage with your agency if they're worried about a loved one or if they themselves may think, hey, I feel a little vulnerable, I might qualify, I, I need some protections? Anyone can call us. So some people in the state are mandated by law to call. Those are our mandated reporters. Um, but we encourage anybody. And, you know, if you hear something, if you think something's going on, say something, right? So our hotline, our reporting line, is 808-832-5115. That's the way to reach us. That's our, that's our front door. So we will evaluate. We'll, you know, we have no expectation that people are going to know if someone qualifies for our service or not. They can suspect abuse or neglect, and we'll determine, is, is this person a vulnerable adult? Is this person somebody that we can directly help? And if not, we can provide information, referral, um, counseling, troubleshooting services over the phone and make sure they get to where they need to be, whether it's with us or somewhere else. How prevalent is this kind of abuse in our community? Unfortunately, uh, you know, it, it, it happens. So um, when you talk about financial fraud, um, those make up between 16 to 18 percent of our caseload on any given year. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a pretty hefty percentage of cases come in for that, and then caregiver neglect, probably the most prevalent, um, and then physical abuse and self-neglect are, are pretty big numbers too. And what can someone do, you know, if they suspect this is happening? They're not really sure, do they call the police, do they call you? What is the appropriate mechanism to report this? Yes, both. Certainly police if it's an emergency. So we don't have um, an immediate dispatch, right? So we can't necessarily, sometimes we do, sometimes we're able to get out immediately if we have somebody right there and it, and it warrants that, we can. But uh, just because of our staffing and the constraints that we're under and, and the caseloads that we have, we may not be able to respond immediately. We do respond quickly. So usually a same day response or within a couple of days. But if somebody is in immediate danger, uh, 911, is the way to go. Um, if somebody calls us and we determine somebody's in immediate danger, we will have that person call or we will call ourselves 911. So could be both, but we encourage calls to us for sure. Okay, our conversation with Lisa is just getting started. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Services. The Adult Protective and Community Services Branch of the Department of Human Services investigates reports of abuse and neglect of vulnerable adults and performs community outreach programs that provide opportunities for older citizens to volunteer. Who qualifies? Those qualifying for services would include anyone who is considered to be a vulnerable adult, those over 18 who have difficulty caring for themselves or have dementia. See Dr. Oda at HEC Medical Clinic Honolulu Specialist in Laser Weight Loss. You can see the change losing one to two inches instantly. Pacific Spray Wash is Oahu's number one trusted exterior cleaning service. We deliver a spotless job for all your pressure washing, roof cleaning, house washing, and solar panel cleaning. Don't miss Hawaii's favorite local shows. Get your house in order with Yonji Denise. It's a Hawaii thing with Lanai Tabura and Brooke Lee. How many episodes did you get? I think I did four. Oh, uh, you're in forever. <laughs> Culturize with McCunny. The Art of Beer with Tim Golden, Daniel Bruce, and David Power. Okay, you literally bought more Guinness than any other human in Hawaii. <laughs> Check your local listings or visit wikiocast.com for full episodes. Welcome back. We are speaking today with Lisa Amador of the Adult Protective and Community Services Branch. Let's focus on that community services aspect. What kind of programs do you offer so that people can re-engage with the community? Sure. We're proud of and love our community services. Uh, we have two of them. We have the Foster Grandparent Program, which we affectionately refer to as Kupuna in the Classroom. 
And those are, uh, we have volunteers who are age 55 and older, they get a little stipend, uh, there's some benefits, and what they do is they go into the DOE classrooms, elementary schools, Head Start classrooms, and they work like a grandparent would, helping the teacher, reading to the children, um, whatever the teacher needs uh, to, to address the needs of the children who might need a little extra help. So it's nurturing, you know, like um, having a, a classroom mother. This way you have a classroom grandma or a classroom grandpa. So that nurturing sort of grandparent feeling um, and helping the children, it benefits both the older adult and the kids. So we're really proud of that program and the teachers love our volunteers and so do the kids. I love that idea also because, you know, we hear again and again about the teacher shortage that we have right now and what better way to give the teachers a little bit of respite and so that they can have, you know, just a little more time to focus on the kids. How big is that um, commitment, you know, when someone's thinking about, oh, well, I don't know if I can do that. Sounds like a job, right? And you said there's a stipend, so there is that element, but um, how big of a commitment does a person need to make for that? So it varies. There is a, there, I, I don't remember off the top of my head how many hours a week is, but there is a requirement. Um, and uh, it, it can be more or less depending on the person and depending on the needs of the child and the school. I love it. So you told me about that one, but you said there's two programs that right. we run. What's the other one? The Senior Companion Program. So similarly, the volunteers are age 55 and older. Similarly, they get a stipend and some benefits. And what they do is they work directly as companions with frail um, older adults. So they'll go into their homes, uh, maybe into uh, settings where they live, and provide companionship services. So like a friend, they might play cards, they might read to them, they might make them a sandwich, talk a story, and again, mutually beneficial, right? Because we know as human beings, we, um, we're, we're creatures that need each other, right? We need uh, communication. We And so um, people that live in isolation, that's one of the worst things for, for anyone, for any human being. Older adults need the stimulation and, and companionship of other people. Yeah, and you know, when I'm thinking about both of these services, whether it's the kids or the uh, kupuna that you're talking about, you know, you tend to think of the benefit for the person receiving the care, but also the person who is the caregiver in this circumstance, it really sounds like they get a benefit out of it too. What do you hear from the folks who enroll in these programs? Absolutely, they get a benefit out of it. It keeps them, you know, they, they have worked their whole adult lives and are in retirement now um, and are looking for something else to do to um, benefit the community um, and and they they love the program um, they, they have the companionship of one another too we get them together for trainings and meetings we have fun with them we celebrate them so it's, it's very mutually beneficial do you need any specific qualifications if someone is watching and says like I think I could do that how do they get involved to qualify for the stipend portion, there is a, a income. Um, you have to be below a certain income to qualify, but that doesn't bar you from being a participant. So if you don't meet the, the requirements for the stipend, you can still volunteer with us and, and uh, reap the benefits of that, the mutual benefits. And is that just, you just go to the website? You can go to the website, yeah. Okay. Senior Companion Program, Foster Grandparent Program. I love both. Okay, we're gonna continue our conversation after the break. Stay with us, you're watching Get Your House in Order. Kinds of Abuse. Hawaii's Adults Protective and Community Services Branch protects vulnerable adults against financial, physical, and psychological abuse and sexual exploitation. The agency also investigates instances of caregiver neglect and self-neglect. Reporting. These kinds of problems do exist in our community. Anyone who suspects there is an issue can call the hotline at 808-832-5115. It's always best to call the police first if there is an emergency situation. Community Services Hawaii's Adult Protective and Community Services Branch manages two community services programs. Kupuna in the Classrooms is a foster grandparents program placing volunteers aged 55 and older in DOE classrooms to assist teachers. The Senior Companion Program places volunteers aged 55 and older to help frail seniors in isolation. For all your money needs, Hawaiian Financial Federal Credit Union is here for you. Visit HIFICU.com. Long's Drugs is always here for Hawaii, providing your family with local favorites, accessible health and wellness services to keep you safe and healthy. Make Long's a part of your day. 
Don't miss Hawaii's favorite local shows. Get your house in order with Yonji Denise. It's a Hawaii thing with Lanai Tabura and Brooke Lee. How many episodes did you get? I think I did four. Oh, uh, you're in forever. <laughs> Culturize with Makani. The Art of Beer with Tim Golden, Daniel Bruce, and David Power. Hey, you literally bought more Guinness than any other Cuban in Hawaii. <laughs> Check your local listings or visit wikiocast.com for full episodes. We are continuing our conversation with Lisa Amador. Now I want to talk about protecting the vulnerable in our community. If uh, family or friends or neighbors are concerned about something might be happening to someone that they, are, that they love, uh, what, what are the steps? What should they look for? There are various things they could look for. First off, I want to say keep in touch with, with the older adults in your life. That's the most important thing. So if, if your mom or dad, grandma, grandpa, auntie, uncle, somebody you care about, an older person lives close to you, visit them, um, see them so that you can see, are there changes in their behavior? Are there changes in their personality? Do they have injuries that are suspicious that maybe you should ask them about? Do they have a new friend? That's a big one for financial exploitation. Is there somebody involved in their life that seems over-involved all of a sudden? Um, you would know that better if you keep in touch. If you can't keep in touch, say mom or dad lives in another state, call them, uh, video call if you can. So, um, you know, if, and, and some older adults are great with technology, again, better than me with technology, right? And some, not so much. So if they're open to it, show them, get an app on their tablet um, and, and video call so that you can see their face and, and when you're talking to them and stay in touch. Let's say you've done that and you suspect something is off. Um, what, what is your best advice? Do you confront the caregiver or do you, uh, talk, you know, you talk directly, of course, to the person that's the, that's the perceived victim, um, but where, what do you do next? Or do you avoid that and immediately go to your kind of service? If you really believe, um, based on either something that the adult in your life, the vulnerable adult, has said to you or that you see that's very concerning, we'd prefer that you not um, confront the alleged perpetrator because we would be, if you called us and they qualify for our services, we would be doing an investigation. Um, police likely also doing an investigation. So we wouldn't want to taint that, right? We wouldn't want to give that person the hint that we're coming in because we'd want to, you know, we want to see uh, what's really happening. Um, so no, I would suggest against confronting the person. If there's an emergency, you, you may have to. Um, you may have to remove your, your adult relative or friend from the situation if they agree to that. Um, so they may find out in some way. But we also want to be careful that people who are concerned also protect themselves, right? We don't want the people who are concerned about their loved ones to be in any danger. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when you're talking about somebody who's violent or uh, stealing money, maybe there are other issues that go along with that, reasons behind that, um, that could pose a danger. So we'd prefer, yes, talk to the loved one in your life, call us, call HPD. Um, I'm interested also not just about, you know, maybe like a family home care situation, but what about a formal care home? We know that so many in our community utilize those services. How do we, what, how, what, how do you navigate this if you suspect that it's someone that's, who's employed? So same, make sure you're visiting. Make sure you know who the people are that are caring for your loved one. Uh, visit them, look at the facility, look at the talk to the people who are caring for them. Most importantly, talk to your loved one. Ask them um, when the, what they ate, when the last time they ate was. You know, are, see, are they taking their medications or not? Look for signs yourself. And if you're concerned, call us. Okay, and what about lastly, I know there's a lot of different kinds of scenarios here, but they're all really important. What about um, in your neighborhood? You've noticed that the person down the street, maybe they haven't come out of their house in a while, or you're concerned about their behavior. You might not know them well enough to go knock on the door, but you are concerned and we should care for one another. What should you do then? If someone hasn't come out of their house for an extended period of time, probably that would be a 911 call to do what we call a welfare check. So we'd want police uh, to go in. We can contact emergency medical services if needed um, to just check, is someone, is someone okay in their house? We have scenarios where you know people haven't been seen for a while and it's the most dire of circumstances. Um, so that would be an emergency kind of call. But yes, also a call to us. 
So for people in the community, you know, if they're in your neighborhood, you might not even know that much information about them. You might not know their full name, but you have their address. Give it to us. Give us whatever you have. We're going to ask lots and lots of questions when you call. You may or may not know the answers to those questions, and that's okay. But we'll ask them, and we will respond if we believe that the person qualifies for our services. And if we're not sure, at a minimum, if it's someone in the community that we believe is in danger, we will call the police uh, for a response. Um, I also need to say that Adult, adult people have a right to self-determination. This is a basic tenet of APS work across the nation. So we have to honor that, and we should honor that. People have the right to make decisions for themselves. So sometimes, uh, as a neighbor or a loved one, and even for APS social workers and nurses, we may feel like, ah, that's not the best decision. We wish that we could do something different. Um, Ultimately, a person has a right to decide where and how they live as long as they have the capacity to make those decisions medically, have the capacity. Um, but getting a social worker out there is better than not because we are great at building, you know, we build rapport, this is what we do. Um, we have a gentle touch and, and uh, so do our nurses that are specifically trained. This is such important work. Thank you so much for sharing your message today. And thank you for watching. Remember, you can always watch the show again, find us on YouTube, or listen as a podcast wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Yanji Denise. Until next time, take care and aloha. Don't miss Hawaii's favorite local shows. Get your house in order with Yonji Denise. It's a Hawaii thing with Lanai and Brooke Lee. Culturize with Makani. The Art of Beer with Tim Golden, Daniel Bruce, and David Power. Visit wikiocast.com for full episodes.